the first hydrothermal vents were discovered on the Galapagos Rift in 1977 um, by a group of geologists. Biologists like myself didn't have a chance to go to the Galapagos Rift until 1979, and every few years they were able to go back and look at how things changed over time. On land we know that there are seasons and leaves fall from trees and, and they come back, but what happens in deep sea hydrothermal vent systems? We really don't know how, how life evolves over, over that kind of time. And so we wanted to go back to, after 25 years of, uh, from the discovery, go back and look how the communities have changed over time. And so when we went back, instead of finding those historic sites that we had all based our knowledge on um, in biology for, for the last two decades, we found no sites at all. The sites that were supposed to be there were not there. We found a new site called Rosebud. We had a couple of dives uh, in 2002. Um, and after two dives, we, it, it took us that long, I should say, to actually realize that the, site, the old sites weren't there. And that this new site we had found is actually there in the place of the old ones. We found lava flows that were like parking lots, uh, just flat, fresh, uh, what we call sheet flows, um, that were at the same location where we knew communities to be in the past. And I remember being in the submarine and we just said, this is a parking lot. All the communities have been paved over. It, it's over. And we drove off the parking lot with Alvin and came across another small area, maybe 50 meters by 50 meters, that had little small animals, mussels and tube worms, and even little clams um, that were starting to colonize. With Rosebud, it's interesting, and the Galapagos Rift is really interesting because um, the pattern of colonization that we have come to understand, there's a certain sequence that tube worms come first and then mussels and then clams, is much different at Rosebud. They're all coming in at the same time, and we're finding new species at, at Rosebud, so it's not fitting the models that we've had in the past. So over the past 25 years, we found over 650 new species uh, in these vent environments. Almost all of them have novel adaptations of how they deal with these toxic environments that have no light, they're in under immense pressure, they're in really cold environments, it's near freezing temperatures down there, um, yet they thrive. They thrive like the, with diversity of a rainforest, they thrive. And so it's just, it's phenomenal that, that we have this opportunity to study how these animals have not only become, uh, have they speciated, become new species, but how they have developed ways of um, being able to image a vent with an, with an eye or sit in toxic hydrogen sulfide uh, fluids and do so well. And so we, we want to understand how those adaptations have evolved. We're starting now to do genomic fingerprinting to tell us where these animals may have come from. Right now we have no idea how a vent larvae uh, gets from one vent site to another. They can be separated by 1,000 kilometers but yet somehow they make it into you know, something the size of your bathtub. The vent area can be very small, yet they find one bathtub in California and another bathtub in, 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 in Boston, Massachusetts. It's just unbelievable. So somehow they have this, really, this adaptation to find these vent sites. And part of that's what we're doing with, with genetic fingerprinting um, of the rosebud animals. Almost half of the species that we find in the Eastern Pacific are not found on the Galapagos Rift. And part of that is because we've never found black smoker vents there before. Because some animals live on the sides of black smokers. They love it there. There's certain crabs, there's worms, several species of worms. And just this past month, we found the first black smokers. Really, you know, 30 meter tall chimneys, uh, just booming black smoke coming out. Um, we just had an imaging system there. We weren't able to actually go down with, with Alvin or an ROV and sample these things which is what we hope to do now. But there, we could find many new species now after 30 years, the anniversary, 30th anniversary of the discovery events is next year. And uh, we're hoping to get back next year to sample these, these vent sites and just continue this fantastic work.